that form has to come down. It is not there. Most auspicious form is uh, perhaps even beyond the transcendent, in the absolute unknowable. From the absolute unknowable, it has to first enter into the transcendent, into Sachidananda. From Sachidananda, it has to step into the cosmic manifestation. <coughs> cosmic manifestation, it must come down to the world of subtle matter, what we are doing. It has to come down to the world of subtle matter. Then, from the subtle matter, it will come down on the gross physical earth here. So, auspicious form is really very far away from us. But then, uh, that is the glory of the whole process of evolution, the challenge, the joy, the beauty also, all that thing you see. And we are waiting for that auspicious form of the Supreme to really appear here. Of course, what will appear here will not be really exactly what is there in the Supreme. Because again, in the process of manifestation, there will be modification, changes, different aspects coming into play, you see. But it will have the qualities to express what for each form is present. What form each form, what for is diamond a diamond, what for a pearl is a pearl, what for a topaz is a topaz. It will express that quality of what for it is. It is not just the brilliance of diamond, but something of a divine nature which will shine out, which will radiate, which will grow, which will expand, which will not remain static. So that is the auspicious part of the form which has to really keep on widening and widening uh, in the manifestation. So it is a, it is a, a wonderful uh, kind of uh, scheme which has been drawn. And then we are a part of the scheme, we are also happy about it, you see. <laughs> Words are there nearer to those absolute realms, absolute realms, words, absolute realms. This is what we have seen last time, but we quickly run through them again and then proceed. Absolute realms, words near to those absolute We saw last time, they are the words of the transcendent. Mahara, Jana, Tapa, Satya. These are the words, Jana, Mahara. Jana, Tapa, Satyam. These are the words, absolute realms, or in the modern terminology, Satit Ananda Vidyana, in Shevanus terminology, you see. So those realms are there, near to those absolute words are there, where the response to truth is swift and sure. The truth wants something to be done, and it immediately catches what the truth wants to express. You see, that kind of, swift and sure, it will not falter uh, in the expression of the truth. Swift, immediately, at once. There is no kind of question of time intervening in the process of expression at all that we see. Where the response to truth is swift and sure, and spirit is not hampered by its frame. Yeah, well, even in our case, we are hampered by our limitations. You have great ideas and you want this to happen, that to happen, I my I must have a wonderful garden like that thing, but then again I get limited by uh, uh, actualities of this creation of this world also, you see. The spirit is not hampered by its frame, frame, the outer structure, you see. And hearts, by sharp division, then cease rain. See, the spirit is not hampered. Heart, the verb to that line, the, the hearts, not, are not hampered by division, season and rent. Hearts are not hampered by division and rent. And delight and beauty are not hampered by inhabitants and love and sweetness are not hampered by law of life. You see, love and sweetness get hampered by law of life in our case, you see, in this world. But there, they have got a kind of a complete mastery over everything and no law is binding. Their law is their own self-expression of truth and beauty and nothing comes in the way of them finding those expressions. A finer substance 
in a subtler mode, a finer substance, in a subtler mode, a finer substance, a finer substance in a subtler mode. That will be a finer sub. The stress is on sub, for substance in a subtler mode. Embody the divinity, earth, but dream. Yeah, you want that kind of a thing, but then it is already there in that realm. In those worlds which are close to such a time, his strength can overtake joys running feet. What a line! What a description! That is real poetry. You see, his strength can overtake joys running feet. Now here in this line, you have got both strength and speed. In this line, you have got both strength. Strength. Can overtake joys running feet means it is faster than the joy speed the way the joy runs you happily say now strength and speed that is the quality of Ashwa horse horse means strength and speed at once both together in fact Sri Aurobindo says the first root the sound Ashwa. In the original Sanskrit language, sound Ashwa in the original Sanskrit language means strength and speed. Then, when you see strength and speed somewhere, then you call it, oh, this horse. You identify that thing with the horse, you see. But basically, Ashwa, that sound itself, conveys the idea of strength and speed. Strength and speed, Ashwa. So Ashwa comes much later. Then it becomes a part of the dictionary, and then you say stallion, then she mare, and she steed. <laughs> All the other words follow. But basically, the sound content means strength and speed. The other things then follow mm -hmm. later on. You see, then you build up dictionaries, you build up associations, and all that thing. The original sound which comes here that expresses the quality state of you see. Strength and speed. Now that is exactly what we have got. Oh, strong foreigner! That is how the Divine Mother is addressing Ashwapati. Oh, strong foreigner! Strength foreigner! Speed! Therefore, he is Ashwapati. Therefore, he is Ashwapati. You see. Oh, strong! In other words, the name Ashwapati is given to this gentleman, to this traveler, to this seeker by the Divine Mother herself. The word Ashwapati, the name Ashwapati has been given to him by her. O oh, strong foreigner who claims this is a strength can overtake joy, running feet, only being the fixed hurdles set by time. Yeah, well, that is, well, the time business not, is not really to put hurdles in the way. It is not kind of purposely, mischievously doing that sort of a thing. It is the way in which time works. And that way of working with the time becomes a hurdle for this person who is in a haste, who wants to run through, you see. It is not that, okay, you are running, let me put a hurdle. It's not that kind of a thing which time is doing, you see. Time has its own sequence, its own process, its own way of doing certain things. But that way of doing things, kala, time, is not really a good enough way for this thing, you see, for this, for this ashwa, you see. <laughs> Overtaking the fixed hurdles set by time, the rapid net of an intuitive glass. Yeah, intuition immediately glass. It doesn't think, rationalize, logicize, nothing. You come and you know that it is there, it is so. And then later on, you may write down mathematical equations, you may do this, you may justify, you may put all uh, arguments uh, in favor of that kind of a thing. But it immediately gives you the truth. It, a rapid net of intuitive class captures the fugitive happiness we desire. Yeah, the happiness which is not really graspable to us, it catches, we desire. We want that thing which is not there in our nature. A nature lifted by a larger breadth of that world, plastic and passive to the all shaping fire, to the all shaping fire. I will, say, I will pronounce it as all shaping fire, you see. I will not say all shaping, all shaping fire, you see. Rhythmically, you see. Plastic and passive to the all shaping fire. Answer the flaming God is casual touch. Nature lifted because nature is now breathing that kind of a larger air and therefore it can answer the goddess touch. 
you respond what the god it wants to do it immune from our inertia of response it has no it is not affected by the way in which we are governed by we are governed by inertia to respond we are very slow we are uh, really very slow i mean <laughs> we can't really respond to what is required of us to do you see a tube light also takes a few seconds to give light <laughs> after switching it on you see <laughs> and we are worse than that immune from our inertia of response it hears the word to which our hearts are deaf at once it hears the words to which our hearts are deaf adopts the seeing of immortal eyes it at once sees what the immortal see it is not just divya drishti divya drishti is a kind of a special faculty which we get arjuna was given divya drishti to see the virata rupa of sri krishna in the gita you see he was given that kind of, but this is divya chakshu which is given that is not that it is automatically there at once you see you don't have to make any kind of an effort give something you see that uh, it hear the word which our hearts at them adopts the seeing of immortal eye and traveler in the roads of line and hue pursue the spirit of beauty it is so pursue the spirit of beauty it is so what a beautiful rhythmic line this line pursue the spirit of beauty it is pursue i am the spell i am of beaut and apis to spirit is so again i am that is how the line is scan pursue the spirit the beauty it is so very musical line also you see thus we draw near to the all wonderful again i will say all wonderful not all wonderful all wonderful i will put the stress on wonder more than that thus we draw so the line will be thus we well it can be trocky it can be pirig also draw near spotty to the pirig all one i am all full spirit you see, you see. <laughs> thus we draw near to all wonderful following is rapture in things as sign and guide beauty is his footprint showing us where he has passed well wherever he goes he leaves his marks of beauty in the form of beauty he walks through the garden and then you see a rose you see a jasmine flower you see many flowers these are his mass of beauty of his presence that is he has walked to that place is him now is his heart with rhythm in mortal brain love is his heart with rhythm in mortal brain love is his heart with rhythm well i mean is very keen in mortal breast obviously is him you see even mortal breast has a very wonderful kind of a thing just imagine for the entire life of yours the heart keeps on beating regularly with a certain frequency it is not very very much in its very small narrow range it keeps on beating that rhythm is speak so that's the magic of nature which has really created such a heartbeat now in that heart you see love is heartbeat entering into that kind of a thing you see the physiological apparatus itself is already so well built and in that now you have got the heart beat of love love is his heart beat rhythm in mortal brain happiness the smile on his shadow ripple face happiness i will call this thing as a tactile happiness long short short happiness the smile i am on his prick a dove i am ripple face and a pest that is how the line happiness the smile on his adorable face adorable face well that is what he was is happiness on a communion of spiritual entities communion well this is of course the christian word communion but she even uses this in a spiritual sense in our bread and wine communion of bread and wine in christian catholic uh, communion of spiritual entities now here the spiritual entities are really coming. it is the spiritual bread it is spiritual wine which are getting mingled here you see <laughs> a communion of spiritual entity a genius of creative immanence makes all creation deeply intimate because of that communion there is a deep intimacy of all objects seen 
makes all creation deeply intimate so therefore because that that intimacy is there it is easy in a way to identify ourselves with other objects you want to find out what that plant is well that communion is there within and you can do a kind of an identification of the dog and then the plant will say yes yes i can do this i can do that i this is the medicine for this kind of illness the plant will tell you it will tell you by itself you see you don't have to go and do physical analysis in a in a pharmaceutical laboratory the plant itself will tell you i can do this i can do that you see <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to build multi million multi billion dollar uh, pharmaceutical institution to find out the properties of matter <laughs> if you have got a communion communion samyam that is what patanjali uses samyam when you identify yourself with an object there is a oneness of the object it is the object which will tell you what it is the knowledge given to you by the object is what is more important most significant satyana means samjana a genius of creative eminence makes all creation deeply therefore that kind of deep intimacy is there you know everything then you want to know what a star is why they are there for what the moon is for why the oceans are see by communion with them they will tell you what they are there for you see a communion of spiritual entities a genius of creative eminence makes all creation deeply intimate that a deep intimacy is the clue for getting the uh, getting the knowledge of other objects you identify yourself with the diamond and the diamond will tell you what it is you identify yourself with the topaz and the topaz will tell you what it is topaz will tell you that i am there holding the light of transformation to pens will tell you i am there holding the light of transformation diamond will tell you i am the fire burning in the depths of your heart if you identify you see the diamond it's not the diamond ring or topaz ring like that you see it is it is something of a different quality if you are identifying yourself with the topaz and then you really had a power of working itself out as a process of transformation you see to pass stands for that sort of a opal you see all these things are there everything even the plants every tulsi it tells you i can cure this i can cure that haldi turmeric tells you i am a very good person to give you antiseptics <laughs> to all this so it that come that knowledge comes by identification by samyama that is samyama is possible because there is a deep intimacy of all the objects there is a deep intimacy of all the objects you see they are not isolated creatures in the universe a fourth dimension of aesthetic sense where all is in our self our selves in all to the cosmic wideness is realigns our soul now fourth dimension that is the phrase straight from the physics in physics we have the four dimensions length breadth height and time length breadth height time fourth dimension so the phrase is very common in fourth dimension they were kind of integrated into a formulation a single formulation by einstein in his theory of relativity until then space was separate time was separated they were kept separated but it is for the first time that the four dimensions were integrated into a single form four dimension 1905 so the phrase fourth di- four dimension is the phrase straight from the physics book but shebantu is using it here in a totally different sense in a perfectly spiritual sense fourth dimension what are the four dimension well the three dimensions are obvious the physical the vital the mental the physical the vital the mental the fourth dimension he says aesthetic fourth dimension has the convention has the connotation of aesthetic 
the physical, the vital, the mental, they are of a different quality also, each one. What is vital is not mental, etc. There are separate dimensions. Each dimension is an independent dimension. In other words, you cannot express one dimension in terms of other dimensions. Matter cannot be expressed in terms of life and mind. Matter has its own expression. Same way, life has its own expression. All these dimensions, they are irreducible dimensions. They cannot be interchanged, cannot be, you cannot express space in terms of the one dimension in terms of the other dimensions, you see. Same way here, when you are talking the fourth dimension, the fourth dimension, the phrase aesthetic, the word aesthetic, he says aesthetic sense, would convey the dimension of psychic, perception of psychic perception, physical, vital, mental, psychic. But Shivantu does not stick directly only to the psychic perception or dimension. Although the word aesthetic would mean of beauty, of love, of joy, of expression, in that sense it would convey the connection with the psychic. But he clarifies what the other aspect is of where uh, where all is in one, so where all is in ourselves, ourselves in all. Now that is a spiritual expression. All is one, one is in all. One is all. You see, there are three things. All is in one, one is in all, all is one. You see, therefore, three. Now here, all is one, one is in all, they are spiritual expressions. So the fourth dimension here, I would rather say, is a psycho-spiritual dimension. It is not purely psycho, psycho, it is not purely spiritual alone, because it also has, where all is in ourselves, ourselves in all, that is adhyatmic, spiritual, absolutely, completely, you see. So we have got the fourth dimension, a psycho-spiritual. In fact, that is what we have got. We have got the psychic being, we have got also the spiritual being also, you know, and combining them together, forms the fourth dimension, see, makes all creation deeply intimate because of that. A fourth dimension of aesthetics where all is in ourselves, ourselves in all, that is the communion also, that is also the intimacy. All is in ourselves, well, that is the communion, that is the intimacy. And ourselves in all, everywhere we are there, see, to the cosmic might, widening, realize our soul. So this psycho-spiritual dimension is what gives you connection with the entire self. That is the fourth dimension in the psychic, psycho-spiritualism. Then a kindling, this, this, is, this is a very beautiful expression, a fourth dimension of aesthetic sense. He says sense, not perception, you see. To the cosmic wide realigns our soul.